Hey, it's AMC me or Ashley, and I'm back with the reading of the web novel, Marry My Husband. It's been not too long because it's getting really good and I'm getting better at making more chat, well, reading more chapters in one video at a time. And it's getting good. The last time we found out that Jiwon's plan with Joran worked and they made um, manager Kim look like an idiot in front of Ji Hyuk and basically the whole department. And he ain't got shit to say. Suman is pissed because at the reunion, Jiwon showed up and showed out as she should. And Unho is trying slowly but surely to rekindle his love that he's held all this time for Jiwon since high school. So we're going to get into chapter 21. Okay, 21, and it's called The Secret Re Secretive Relationship Between Ji Hyuk and Hyu Hyun, the co-worker that's cool. She's the one that had the, uh, she's the one that got the card from Ji Hyuk to buy coffee and Suman seen it and she got pissed. A bead of sweat slid down Ji Hyuk, sorry, Joan Uk's back, the manager. Fear like written fears like written apologies, salary reductions, and performance assessments popped into his head. Why did you approve a proposal copied and pasted from the internet for this meeting? Ji Hyuk said, asked coldly, especially a proposal you previously refused. Did you read it properly? I I did review it carefully. You just said the proposal was somewhat better now, yet it is identical to the one you turned down. Joan Uk opened his mouth, but no sound came out. I'll ask you again. Did you read it properly, Joan Uk? Ji Hyuk once again blatantly called him by his first name without any formalities. It was the most danger Joan Uk had been in since he'd started at the company. I, I'm sorry, I must have made a mistake. I'm quite tired. Are you in your right mind? How can you make a mistake like this? Performance assessments were coming up. If Joan uh, Ji Hyuk put this incident in writing, it would affect Joan Uk's career horribly. He needed to prevent that even if it meant further rebuke. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Yu. <laughs> Joan Uk threw away his pride and bent in a 90 degree bow to, Joan Huk, to Ji Hyuk, even though the latter was years younger than him. I didn't pay enough attention. I promise this won't ever happen again. You don't need to apologize to me. Submit a written account by tomorrow. Ooh, got him. The words Joan Uk had feared most fell from Ji Hyuk's lips anyway. Mr. Yu, please let it go just this once. Or please give me just one month to... Oh, also, Ji Hyuk mercifully silenced Joan Uk's please. He looked around at the other employees. In the future, skip this com confirmation process and bring your proposals directly to me. Joan Uk was even being stripped of his authority. At that moment, Joan Uk's influence within the office decreased by half. M Mr. Yu, the new proposal. Yu Yian politely held out the packet, still warm from the printer. Ji Hyuk tossed the problematic first proposal aside and opened the new one. Let's continue with the meeting, Miss Yang. Please begin. Joan Uk sank back into his chair, looking like he'd swallowed manure. 
while the employees recovered from the forever, Joran and Jiwan locked eyes. When Jiwan covertly winked, Joran tucked back her hair. It was the briefest motion, but Jiwan saw Joran make a circle with her thumb and index finger, the okay sign. Ooh, our girls are teaming up and it's working. We love it. Girl power. I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Damn it. I have to write an explanation of what happened just because of something this tiny. Joan Uk cursed under his breath as he exhaled, inhaled his cigarette. The cigarette was the size of his fingernail by the time he tossed it in the ashtray. Damn. <laughs> but even when he lit a new one, he still couldn't calm down. After the written account and evaluation from G Ji Hyuk, he'd face a huge disadvantage in the performance assessment. He could kiss, kiss any hope of a pr promotion goodbye. He'd be lucky if he didn't get a salary reduction. The monthly payments for his car and installments for the golf club set he'd already purchased swam through his head. And what will Suman think of me? He already didn't feel impress impressive enough. He bowed to Ji Hyuk in front of the entire division. He felt he'd gotten 10 years further away from walking down the aisle with Suman. But while John Uk was engrossed in his bleak thought, a text arrived. Opa, are you okay? Mr. Yu went too far. Crying smile, crying face emoji. <laughs> The old bachelor's heart throbbed. How should I reply to seem cool? He contemplated for a while and decided to act like an indifferent businessman, smoking at the top of a building with the wind in his hair. It's fine. I'm going to smoke away my troubles. <laughs> he waited after sending the message, but he didn't receive any reply. Was she busy? Joan Uk rubbed his head. Oh, sorry. Joan Uk rubbed the stub of his cigarette into the ashtray. Opa! Suman climbed up the emergency stairs and waved. So you are here. Drink this. Suman handed him a blue canned coffee. Joan Uk's favorite drink. The canned coffee made his breath stink like old rags after a smoke, but he didn't know that. Don't worry, she said. I'm sure you only miss the details because you were so busy. How is that your fault? The delayed imaginary wedding crept closer again. Joan Uk opened the can and gulped down the coffee, wiping his mouth with the back of his hand. <sighs> of course, I'm in charge of so many tasks. How could I remember all of them? So I was thinking, Opa, Suman's small face was filled with concern. Could Miss Yang have done this maybe intentionally? Maybe she asked Jiwan, I mean, Miss Kang to write the same proposal. I don't know. It seems like it could be possible. Suman emphasized that she was only speaking hypothetically. Of course. Joan Uk didn't hear any of her maybes. That's possible. His thick eyelids narrow. It made him look even slimier. Don't make such a scary face. I'm only suggesting this because I'm upset. Suman offered a sheepish grin. I should get back. I should get back to my work. Catch you later, Opa. Ugh. Joan, Joan Uk downed the remainder of his coffee and lit another cigarette. He got angrier thinking about it. How dare she slip up at work and screw me over? Huh. I'm not the only one with a good performance assessment. Oh, I'm not the only one with, with a performance assessment. Joan Uk's word blew, <gasps> words blew away with the smoke. You can try it if you want to. You can. I don't think it's going to work out for you, buddy. It was a sluggish Friday afternoon. Almost time to get off work. Jiwon went to the bathroom and opened her pouch. She felt self-conscious about fixing her makeup in the office. I didn't bring my lipstick. I should buy another one when I leave. The stall suddenly opened as she closed her pouch. Hu Yian appeared. You don't have any lipstick, my lifesaver? Did I say Joran? It's Jiwon. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you want to borrow mine? Is that okay? Of course. Hu Yian dug through her pouch and pulled out a tube. It came from a famous luxury brand. Even Jiwon recognized it. I've seen this before. She turned the lipstick in her, in her hand, delving into her memory. But she couldn't remember. 
Jiwon gave up and applied the lipstick, then returned the tube to Hu Yeon. Thank you. The color's gorgeous. Yeah, it looks stunning on you. Hu Yeon patted her cheeks with her cushion compact. Then she added on a layer of lipstick. As Jiwon watched, she suddenly remembered the lipstick in the compartment of Ji Hyuk's car. Hu Yeon, can I see that? She had no way of knowing if it was the same color, but the case was the same. Is it just a coincidence? Jiwon returned it to Hu Yeon. Just looking. Let's go. We have three minutes until we get off. Yep, it's finally the weekend. Hu Yeon pumped her hands in the air. The action made Jiwon feel upbeat too. Are you going somewhere, Jiwon? Suman tilted her head when Jiwon returned with touched up makeup. I have plans. Plans? With who? Suman's eyebrows rose. GA and the girls. Do you want to come too? Jiwon asked with feigned casualness. Suman flinched and shook her head. I'm good. I'm too tired. Aw, okay. Rest up. Today was the day she agreed to meet G.A. She put special care into her clothes and makeup. What will they say to me? How should I respond? Having no intel, she felt unnecessarily nervous and a bit scared too. It's fine. I've been fine until now. Jiwon repeated the words like a mantra. You said you're meeting your friends from home today, right? Minwan approached her while Jiwon placed her pouch in her bag. The subway will be swarming today since it's Friday. I'll take you. Ew. <laughs> she longed to run Minwan over with a car. <laughs> but her rationale, but her rational side reminded her she needed to maintain her relationship a little longer. As she continued, she focused on her phone. Minwan quickly added, You said you're going to Gangnam Station. It's close. I can go to the gym after taking you. It's better than going on a date with him, Jiwon decided. Thanks, Minwan. Minwan brightened to add her fake smile. No problem. My car's in a corner. Wait for me at the front entrance. I'll meet you there. Jiwon looked away from Minwan, who hummed to himself with a wide grin. You always acted nice. You trained me like you'd train a pet dog. You gave me compliments and snacks when I listened. But after you finished training me, you gave me nothing. Not even any kibble to live on. Now it's time for me to train you. She saved her work and turned the computer off. It was 5.59 p.m. Jihyuk stood. Let's clock out. Good work, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. Jiwon woke between the parting employees. Minwan followed close on her heels. He pressed the elevator button for her. When are you going home? I don't know. Probably around nine, she guessed. Should I pick you up? He asked. She hesitated. You'll be tired. Hu Yeon chimed in. Miss Kang, you're going to Gangnam? Yeah, I have plans, so Minwan said he'd take me. I'm going to Gangnam? What a coincidence. Must be fate, huh? Jiwon was even happier than the exhilarated Hu Yeon. She would rather climb into Ji Hyuk's car and demand a ride than get into Min Wan's car alone. Really? Then let's go together. You can ride with us. That's okay, right, Min Wan? Uh, yeah, that's fine. His face clearly said it wasn't fine at all. Jiwon pretended not to notice and shifted closer to Hu Yeon. Great. There's a lot of people on the subway. Totally. You're the best, Miss Kang. Minwan's the one driving, though, Jiwon protested. Still, <laughs> Jiwon and Huan chattered as they crossed the lobby. With everyone leaving work at once, the car lanes looked like a war zone. Now that I think about it, I don't see Suman, Hu Yuan said. She wasn't in the elevator hall either. You're right. She must be planning to leave when there are fewer people. Jiwon cared so little about Suman that she didn't even notice Suman was missing. She didn't even want to, She didn't even want to either. Yu Yeon tugged on Jiwon's sleeve. Can I ask you something a little personal? What is it? Did you fight with Su Min? Yu Yeon's wide eyes widened. No, not at all. Fighting was something you did when you still had ex expectations for the other person. True that, girl. True, true, true that. Jiwon didn't even want to fight with Su Min anymore. Then what about Mr. Park? Jiwon shrugged. What's there to fight about? More importantly, why are you asking? You seem so distant lately. I was going to take your side if you were fighting. They probably 
They probably had seemed distant. Jiwon just grinned. Hu Yian didn't ask any more personal questions. Oh, Mr. Yu is leaving too. Hu Yian pointed to the parking lot. Jiwon instantly recognized the black sedan. You're right. So Minwon should be out soon too. A question suddenly popped into Ji Wan's head. How did Hu Yian recognize Ji Hyuk's car? Ji Hyuk's car was nice for his age, but it didn't stand out that much. The only unique feature was the tinted windows. Ji Wan had worked with him much longer than Hu Yian, but she only started to recognize his car recently. Mm -mm -mm. The black sedan slowed to a stop. Through the half open passenger side window, Ji Hyuk nodded, surprised, surprised by the unexpected gesture. Ji Wan greeted him with her eyes. Hu Yian, on the other hand, greeted him vibrantly. Thank you for today, Mr. Yu. Have a safe drive home. With another nod, he rolled up the window. Ji Yan saw a flash of his expression, though. It remained emotionless. That definitely isn't the face of someone who likes me romantically. She felt even more certain that Unho had been mistaken. Soon Minwan's car arrived. Jiwon turned to Hu Yian as she fastened her seatbelt. You have plans with a friend? Um, not exactly a friend. I'm just meeting someone, she answered. She was going to meet her boyfriend? Jiwon supposed it would be even stranger if Hu Yian didn't have a boyfriend. She was so pretty. I won't ask anymore. Do you need us to drop you off at Gangnam Station? Yes, at exit 10, she replied. I'm also going that direction. You can let us off together, Minwan, Jiwon said. Minwan smiled good-naturedly. I feel like I'm chauffeuring you two to a date. It's just because we're going the same way, Jiwon replied. You're going on a date with me this weekend, right? He asked. A date with Minwan? Jiwon inwardly shuddered. She didn't even want to think about it. I will if I don't have anything going on. <laughs> You're so inattentive to me lately. Doesn't it seem so, Miss Yu? Minwon turned to Hu Yian for support. It's not good to be too hung up on your boyfriend either, right? Couples should maintain some space. And awful office couples sometimes have to act distant, distanced, even if they're not. She's young, but so smart. Jiwon nodded proudly. We're here. You can let us off here, Mr. Park. Stepping out of the car, Jiwon and Hu Yian exchanged their goodbyes and went their separate ways. She arrived earlier than she expected, so she had a lot of time to spare. Should I sit by myself at a cafe? Jiwon contemplated for a moment, then began to wander around Gangnam Station. Gangnam Station on a Friday evening bustled with people. Everyone had plans just like Jiwon. It was fun observing passerbys. She finally blotted out her complicated thoughts about Sumin, Minwon, Inho, and Ji Hyuk. Jiwon picked up a lipstick at a cosmetic store and bought two pretty notebooks at the bookstore next door. She planned to give one of them to Hu Yian. Now, where is a cafe? A refreshing coffee would be the cherry on top of her day. She looked around the bookstore, then she squinted at someone familiar across the road. Mr. Yu? He stood in front of a cafe with his hands in his pockets. He seemed to be waiting for someone. Soon, a young woman emerged from inside the cafe and walked comfortably beside, Miss, beside Ji Hyuk. They were some distance away, but Ji Wan recognized her at once. Hu Yian. And that's it for chapter 21. And we're going to head into chapter 22 called He's Trash. Jiwon watched the two until they disappeared from sight. Though upon thought upon thought stacked in her mind. In her past life, when Joran quit, there were rumors, rumors that Hu Yian and Ji Hook Ji Hyuk were a couple, so those weren't just rumors. After some slow deliberation, she drew. She grew certain. The lipstick in the car, the way Hu Yian instantly recognized Ji Hyuk's car, and how awkwardly she'd replied when asked who she was meeting. Not to mention, Ji Hyuk nodded a greeting to Hu Yian as he left the parking lot. On top of that. He gave her his personal card to buy coffee for the meeting. 
It's not good to be too hung up on your boyfriend either, right? Couples should maintain dis some distance. Jiwon had merely thought Hyu Yeon was smart. Now her words took on a whole new meaning. And office couples sometimes have to act distance, even if they're not. So that's what she meant. Jiwon couldn't picture the bubbly Hyu Yeon and the impassive Ji Hyuk together. However, they look like the perfect couple when they walk side by side. And it's none of my business. Jiwon didn't think too much of it. She headed for a different cafe. She told herself if she was just it was just her imagination that she felt a little dejected. Come to the bean shop behind the movie theater. I'll be waiting on the second floor. Jiwon typed the message to GA and sat down with a cup of coffee. Smartphones and Wi-Fi weren't widespread yet, so she didn't have anything to do. The other customers were reading, chatting, and looking outside. This is much better. She rested her hand, she rested her chin in her hand and reminisced. In the past, on the rare occasion they went to a cafe, Minwon spent the entire time engrossed in his phone. Jiwon didn't have anything interesting on her phone or anyone to call her, so she just sat there blankly. You're here early. Did we keep you waiting a long time? Ji-A's voice shook Jiwon from her thoughts. She stood. No, I just got here. Ah, uh, that's a relief. Ji-A and yoon Hyu sat across from her. How can a reunion feel so awkward? Jiwon regretted coming. Senna will be here soon, too. Oh, there she is, G.A. pointed. Sorry I'm late. Senna hasted over, hastened over and claimed the remaining empty spot right next to Jiwon. Awkwardness descended. It felt like they were playing a silent game. Um, after what felt like an eternity, but was only a few minutes, Senna cleared her throat. <clears> throat> um, after hearing what you said that day, I thought... A I thought a lot, and we talked with each other. <laughs> oh, shucks. Senna suddenly began speaking in a different dialect. Yoon Hyu. Yoon Hyu nudged Senna's foot under the table. Why can't you speak properly? <sighs> then why don't you do it? Why are you crapping on me when you're not doing anything? Senna crossed her arms. You said you would do it. Only because you said you can't. Sheesh. G.A. gulped her coffee like beer and slammed the cup on the table. This won't do. G. Wan, I'm going to be straight with you. Here it comes. G. Wan slowly sipped her coffee. These three were my main bullies. They aren't really apologizing. After thinking about it all day yesterday, she'd concluded that this was all a front. But that was okay. She'd listen to whatever they had to say. If they reproached her, she would reproach them back. If they swore at her, she would ignore them. She came here to stop. She came here to stop running away, not to actually make friends. I'm really sorry. School was hard for you because of us, huh? Ga said. Her face flushed red. Sorry, Yunhee quickly added. I'm also sorry, Jiwon. We really thought you were a bad person. Senna ducked her head. Yoon Hyu kicked Senna's foot again. Why are you suddenly using the Seoul dialect now? Duh, we're in Seoul. It's embarrassing. Y'all use the Seoul dialect too. When in Rome and all. Senna, Senna narrowed her eyes at Yoon Hyu. Both of you shut up. You're so loud, Ji-A muttered. Jiwon sat quietly among the bickering trio. She... <laughs> so they really had come to apologize. She'd finally gotten an apology for the nightmare of her high school days. She thought it would remain eternally embedded in her memory like a thorn. Memories from the past, which she thought she was fine with, overlap with the girl's familiar faces and dialect. Jiwon's stuffing herself. How can you eat after what you did? What are you looking at? Are you mad? Get your act together. Don't live like that. Back then, she was okay. She really was. Jiwon, are you all right? I'll tell the girls to stop. At least she thought she was. It's fine. If you do that, you'll wind up friendless too. Don't worry about me. But she wasn't. Jiwon, are you crying? 
G.A. asked in surprise. At that moment, tears overflowed from her brimming eyes. Don't cry, Jiwon. I said I'm sorry. Yoon Hyu anxiously held out some of thin tissues. How can she wipe her face with that? Move aside. Senna slapped Yue, <laughs> Yoon Hyu's hand away and pulled out higher quality tissues from her bag. Don't cry, okay? We were so immature back then. Yoon Hyu murmured. She's right. We thought you were a brazen mean bitch. I'm so, so sorry. G.A. apologized again, somehow still using the standard profanity-ridden speech of bullies. <laughs> Jiwon wasn't even sad, but the tears kept spilling. It felt like the icicle stabbed into her heart was melting in the tears. Sorry, Jiwon. It was hard for you, wasn't it? We're actually not that bad people, but... Hmm... Yoon-hyu also started to cry. This time, Senna kicked her foot. Why are you crying? It's disgusting. Tears are coming out of my eyes. What do you want me to do? Shut up and hand me some tissues. Nah, you use napkins. Yoon-hyu wiped her tears with the napkins. Ji-won didn't know you, Yoon-hyu was the type to cry when she saw someone else crying. Give me some more tissues. <laughs> Jiwon blew her nose and looked around with swollen eyes. Everyone in the cafe was staring at them. Belated embarrassment struck her. Y'all, Jiwon asked quietly. Ji-a and Senna focused on her. yoon Hyu also blew her nose and looked at Jiwon. Aren't y'all embarrassed? Jiwon asked quietly. The other three glanced around in chagrin. To be honest, I'm embarrassed as heck, yoon Hyu replied. I'm also, I also, I almost just went home. I'm going to go. I'm scared someone will recognize me. Senna grabbed her bag, but G.A. pulled her back. Shut up before I tell your boyfriend about your boob job. Senna's expression stiffened. Do you want to die? I'll write it in my will that you had a boob job before I die. <laughs> Jiwon blinked two times and burst into laughter. G.A. and Senna stopped bickering, along with the red-eyed yoon Hyu. They all faced Jiwon. You should be careful about laughing right after crying if you don't want to grow hair on your important body part. <laughs> Senna said in a serious voice, referencing an old Korean saying. G.A.'s face wrinkled in repulsion. Was that supposed to be a joke? If it wasn't funny, whatever. But it was Jiwon smiling even wider, teardrops still lingering around her eyes. Then she started crying again. As she laughed and cried multiple times, Jiwon realized, I was lonely. I just wanted to laugh over meaningless jokes with friends like any other person. Dang. Our girl is out here struggling. Struggling, but we kind of knew that already. <clears throat> Cheers! Four heavy pints of beer met in the air with a loud clink. Jiwon chugged her freezing cold beer and tossed a rice cracker in her mouth. That wench came over and made a whole fuss, crying. It was so pitiful to watch that tiny girl cry. That's why we are so determined to harass you, Yoon Hyu said as she wiped the back of her mouth with her hand. Senna shook her head from side to side. I hated you from middle school. They were nasty. There were nasty rumors about you. Rumors? Jiwon wrinkled her forehead. Uh, I don't know if I can say this. Senna shifted uncomfortably, sipping cold water. You didn't have a mom. Kids said she ran away because she had an affair and that you started to hang around with the bad kids. That's why everyone avoided you. The few children who'd approached Jiwon with kind words then completely ignored Jiwon not too long after, all because of some ridiculous rumors. It's true that my mom ran away because she had an affair, Jiwon said. The th other three were taken aback. You idiot, have some tact. yoon Hyu barked at Senna. She's always so unthinking. We go through a lot, bringing her around with us. S Sorry, I didn't know, Senna's lips wobbled. So what? It's the truth, Jiwon giggled and downed more beer. But not the rest. The only friend I had was Suman. Where would I find bad kids? And if I had stayed out, my dad would have beat me up. 
The fact that Jiwon's mom had ran away in the middle of the night was a secret. Only Suman knew. Jiwon didn't have anyone else to tell. Obviously, those rumors were Suman. Those rumors were Suman's work. Why? For what reason? Jiwon was more curious than angry. Now, we got played by that witch for three years. What would we do? What should we do about her? Ga shoved three rice crackers into her mouth at once and chomped angrily. My thoughts exactly. If it weren't for Unho, we wouldn't have known. <gasps> Yoon Hyu's accented words stuck in Jiwon's ears. The rice crackers lingering in her hand, forgotten. Unho, what about him? Unho reached out to Ga. They spoke on the phone. That's how we learned what really happened back then. Senna explained. Ga gulped down the remainder of her beer and slammed the glass on the table. Unho said he thought you, we bullied you because we were jealous of you. Why is he so narcissistic? He's not my type, so why would I be jealous? Totally, and you know I had a boyfriend then, right? Senna snapped. Oh, that's a oh that piece of trash. Yoon Hyu snorted. I threw him away as soon as I went to college. So shut up, Senna retorted. Yoon-hyu giggled and rested her chin in both of her hands. Unho said he used to like you. Did you know that, Jiwon? He said that? Jiwon's stomach churned, clenched. It must be true then. Yoon-hyu's eyes sparkled. She looked like she was going to throw a party. He contacted us to ask us to apologize to you. He must still like you. What about you? Unho isn't bad. I have a boyfriend. Jiwon avoided her gaze. Senna leaned forward. Are you going to get married? No, never. <laughs> Jiwon replied with a grin, grim expression. She vigorously shook her head. Goosebumps rose all over her body, just hearing the word married. Ga grinned. Then it's fine. You never know what's going to happen until you're walking down the aisle. Just stay friends and go out with Unho. When you break up, Unho's pr just go, just stay friends and go out with Unho when you break up. Unho's pretty unwavering. He probably wait. <laughs> he isn't pretty unwavering. He's full on single minded. <laughs> Jiwon just smiled. She felt like she'd been born anew. Technically, she was, but that wasn't the point. She became closer with their colleagues, and now she had friends to gossip with over the weekend. She knew how to put on makeup now, and she wasn't afraid to spend her money. She learned someone was interested in her romantically, and had been for a very long time at that. Don't just smile. Say something. What do you think of Unho? Or do you like your boyfriend that much? Is he good to you? Is he good looking? What does he do? Is he tall? Senna asked animatedly. Senna considered herself an expert in relationships. She was more interested in other people's love lives than in cheesy television shows. Jiwon barely managed to resist a frown at the thought of Minwon. I don't like him that much. I'm with him out of loyalty. No, we're still together because I need something from him. Then you can break it off, Yoon Hyu grinned. But Jiwon shook her head. It's not time yet. Senna nodded in understanding. Then is there anyone else other than their, your boyfriend and Unho? There must be someone at work who likes you. Someone at work who likes me? She thought, Ji Hyuk. Um, well, Jiwon hesitated. Senna's eyes sparkled even brighter. Yes, yes, who? At work, um, there's this person with a higher rank. A higher rank? He must be an old man, Yoon Hyu chimed in. Senna smacked her. Shut up! Anyway, Jiwon, what about him? Hmm, he keeps giving me rides. I tell him it's okay, but he drops me off at home or takes me wherever I'm going, always saying it's on the way to where he's headed. Last time I fell asleep in his car and he waited for three hours without waking me. And... Is that all? Senna looked put out. Jiwon pressed her lips together. When I clash with someone at work, he helps me. Once he let me take the rest of the day off when I wasn't feeling well. 
It's obvious. He's totally in love with you, Yoon Hyu said seriously. This time, Senna didn't smack her. How old is he? Is he a looker? He's in his early 30s. In his looks? Jiwon thought of Ji Hyuk without his glasses. He didn't look pretty like Unho, but he had a handsome face. He's good looking. Done. Then if you don't like your boyfriend or Unho, that's the guy, Senna clapped. Jiwon hesitated. But he has a girlfriend. In an instant, Senna's smile vanished. Jie, who had been listening attentively, lifted her pint to, to take a swig. He's trash. Yuhei, Yuhu and Senna nodded fur furiously. Damn. They were all in Ji Hyuk's corner until Ji Won said he got a girlfriend. And they were right. At this point in time, from what we know, she assumes he has a girlfriend and it's her new best friend at work. And the fact that it seems like he's hitting on her, he is in fact trash. He is trash. He is trash. He is trash. <laughs> Um, I'll be back with chapter 22. But thanks for listening and I'll see you then. All right, and we're back with chapter 23 titled An Unexpected Proposal. Oh my, my head. Jiwon moaned in pain. She clearly drank too much beer yesterday. Her headache throbbed the moment she opened her eyes. When she looked at the clock, it was already one in the afternoon. Thankfully, today was a Saturday. I'll just go back to sleep. People often said that sleep was the best way to deal with the hangover. Jiwon closed her eyes and tried to drift off. Then she felt vibrations coming from under her pillow. She managed to flip open her phone. Mm. Mm. Hello? Mm. You're up? Asked the male voice on the other end. Her sleepiness vanished at once. Yeah. Did you sleep well? No, because you didn't contact me yesterday. Because I didn't want to, Jiwon silently calculated how much more time she had until Minwon's proposal. She needed him to propose to Suman instead, but lately their relationship seemed to have ground to a halt. I was so excited about seeing my classmates for the first time in a while. What do you think about lunch tomorrow instead? I was going to suggest exactly that. Minwan's voice brightened like he truly loved her, although that wasn't possible. I'll pick you up at 12. Be ready. Okay, I'll contact you again after resting some more. Finally, the intermittable called ended. <laughs> Jiwon gave up on sleep and drank a cup of juice, then lay in bed, opening her laptop. It climbed a bunch. The 20 million won she invested in J Pharmaceuticals had already increased by three times. Ooh, that's right, girl. Get that money. That'll be four times by next week. It would continue increasing, but there was no need to keep it here when there was a better option. She shut her laptop and, sit and stayed laying down until her phone rang again. This time it was Hugh Yeon. Jiwon felt guilty for some reason. Hello? My lifesaver! Did you get home? Did you get home okay yesterday? Yeah, my head hurts because I drank too much beer. Hugh, Hugh Yeon groaned in sympathy. Mm, hangovers from beer and mulgogi are the worst. That's tough. It's a good thing I didn't drink mulgogi then, Jiwon said. Right. Right you are, Hyuan giggled. You must be staying in today. I'm not even going to leave my house. I'm ordering in, Jiwon rubbed her temple. Good plan. What are you doing tomorrow? Let's hang out if you don't have any plans, Hyuan sounded excited. It made her guilt even worse. Oh, I can't. I'm meeting Minwon tomorrow. It would be a lot more fun to shop with Hugh Yeon than sit with Minwon. She knows us, right? Jiwon was genuinely disappointed. You're too popular. I should make a reservation in advance next time. It was strange to hear she was popular. She was still getting used to meeting up with anyone but Minwon and Suman. Let's go eat something good next weekend, or the one after that. On me. I'm down anytime, Hugh Yeon cheered. Does she not meet Mr. Yu over the weekend? 
Jiwon wondered, then nodded. Since they meet every day at work, it made sense they took a break on the weekends. The next day, Minwon arrived at Jiwon's house a little earlier than they'd agreed on. You're here early, Minwon. Jiwon stepped into the car, wearing an ankle-length skirt with a knit top. She wasn't in the highest of spirits. She couldn't believe she had to go on a date with Minwon today. To make matters worse, it was a warm day with a perfect breeze. I can see you for longer if I come earlier, Minwon grinned and stroked Jiwon's hair. Jiwon shifted her body closer to the window. I made a reservation at a restaurant. You haven't had breakfast yet, have you? What's the occasion, she asked. I'll tell you when we get there. She felt like she knew why Minwon was in such a good mood. Poor you. That investment's a scam. She didn't pity him at all. Jiwon pressed her lips together and watched the passing scenery. The restaurant Minwon picked looked just as it had in her memory. In fact, so did the location, the weather, their seats, and the food they ordered. Her anxiety spiked. This is expensive, Minwon. Aren't you pushing yourself too much? She asked in the meekest, most concerned voice she could muster. Minwon sat straighter. Of course not. I made it big this time. I'll buy you food like this for the rest of your life. I won't ever see food like this again if I marry you, you bastard. Jiwon forced a smile. Remember what I said last time about that stock? It's making waves. Ten times is nothing. It really, it really will make waves, Jiwon said, just smiled. It's a relief, isn't it? We won't have to worry about our first home together. Our first home? Why are you talking about this already? Jiwon left... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Jiwon left her uh, steaming steak untouched and gapped at Minwon. Why are you so surprised, he asked. We should start getting ready now. Ready? For what? What else? Our marriage. Minwon beamed. He seemed to have deemed Jiwon's reaction as deep emotion rather than surprise at his nonsense. Jiwon quickly gulped some water and forced the smile Minwon wanted. Marriage? Isn't it a bit early? My mom says she wants to meet you. That uh, unhinged old lady who thinks she's the madam of some rich household while her son is a Joe Sonaran minister. The woman who thinks I'm some peasant even though I work at the same company and hold the same rank as her son. Your mother? When did you talk to her about me? She asked. I always do. I'm sure you do. You likely told her you found an idiotic nice pushover. After we're, after we're done, let's go to the department store. I'll buy you clothes to wear when we meet with my mom. Really? She was actually surprised this time. As far as she could recall, Minwon never bought her clothes. Even though he threw fits about how she dressed like a beggar, he never bought her anything personal. Really? You're that happy? Minwon asked. Uh, y yeah. Minwon seemed satisfied with her response. My mom will like you the moment she sees you. Should we move in together before the wedding? I've been worried about you living alone for a while now. She didn't plan on giving him a chicken, but he was already counting his eggs. Juwon chewed her steak, listening. After we get married, you should stay at home and prepare to have kids. Quit work, he said. Quit work? You want me to be jobless? She barely restrained her scowl. Not jobless, but a full-time housewife. Minwon pounded his chest. Doesn't it make sense for a real man not to feed his wife? I don't want you forced to work. You can take care of the housework and rest and work on your hobbies in your spare time, okay? He sure talks a big game. Jiwon calmly raised a fork full of steak and vegetables to her mouth. It's delicious. The food didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> That's right, girl. Enjoy it. Minwon didn't shut up the entire time they ate. It was scary how carefully he tended to Jiwon. He cut her steak into bite-sized pieces, handed her water and napkins. When they finished, he courteously pulled out her chair. Next came the department store. As Minwon promised, he bought her an elegant dress, shoes, and a spring coat. He even picked out a comfortable office outfit for her. Try it on. Um, okay. Jiwon dazedly put on the clothes Minwon handed her. She walked out of the fitting room to his wide-eyed stare. It looks so perfect on you, ma'am, the store employee said. I'm not just saying this to sell our clothes. You're so tall and have such a nice body. Anything would look good on you. The employee's compliments felt strange, but not as strange as Minwon. You look beautiful, Jiwon. More beautiful than ever, I, than I ever imagined. 
His face was all smiles and his eyes never left hers. He normally acted nice, but he was exceedingly nice today. Your boyfriend must love you, ma'am, the employee said wistfully as she wrapped up the newly purchased clothes. Minwan replied for the speechless Jiwan, I do. Soon I'm going to be, I'm going to level her up from my girlfriend to my wife. You two are getting married? You look so perfect together, the employee clapped happily. Jiwan struggled to keep a straight face. I'm not marrying you, Suman is. Let's buy a bag too while we're here. What do you think, Jiwan? Minwan asked in an in an even better mood after the, after the employee's compliments. A bag? Yeah, you should carry a pretty bag. She didn't want to take it, not because she felt apologetic. She just didn't want to. I... Jiwan was about to decline politely, but suddenly she remembered something and changed her mind. I'll use it well if you buy me one. Thanks, Minwan. Picking out her clothes on Monday was easy. She wore the clothes, shoes, and bag Minwan had bought her. Hu Yian was the first to react when Jiwan walked in wearing the nauseating outfit. Aren't those from that designer's latest collection, Miss Kang? You said you went on a date yesterday. Did Mr. Park? Minwan winked. You probably thought it looked cool. Jiwan gave the bag to Hu Yian, who gawked at it and replied in mock shyness. Yes, Minwan bought it for me. Suman padded over and snatched the bag from Hu Yian. She turned to Minwan after she inspected it. The clothes look new too. Isn't this a bit much, Mr. Park? You're so lucky, Jiwan. I can do this much for her, he said proudly, as I should. And I should. Jiwan flashed a smile at Minwan and took her seat. Suman opened her mouth, ready to say something else, when Ji Hyuk suddenly popped out of nowhere. Everyone to your seats, please. Let's get started. Huh? Suman's eyes widened. Jiwan and Juran also stared at Ji Hyuk. Ji Hyuk's trademark horned rim glasses were gone. His newly styled hair looked trendier, and he wore a simpler tie, too. Mr. Yu, you changed your style. It looks great, Joran said. Suin made a show of clapping. This is much better. I wouldn't have recognized you if I saw you outside. He's trash. Jie's words flashed through Jiwan's mind. She suddenly felt irritable. She didn't comment on Ji Hyuk's new style. Instead, she turned on her computer. Regardless of how Jiwan felt, naturally the main topic of lunch at lunch was Ji Hyuk. He became so handsome. I was surprised. Do you think he's dating someone? Joran asked. Jiwan's heart sank. She carefully observed Hu Yian. However, Hu Yian seemed unaffected. He looks the same to me, whether he wears glasses or not. Eh. What do you think, Miss Kang? Why are you suddenly asking me? Jiwan blinked, taken aback. Uh, I don't have any opinion. It doesn't feel right saying whether he looks good, or better or worse. He's just a supervisor at work. Ji Hyuk is the bad one here. I don't do anything. I didn't do anything wrong. Jiwon hoped Hu Yian would know that. She tried to express with her whole body that she wasn't interested. Based on Hu Yian's silence, it seems to have worked. Oh, Jiwon, it's Mr. Park. Suman signaled with her eyes. She spent most of the meal picking at her food more than usual. Shivers ran down Jiwon's body at the same moment she felt a warm breath on the nape of her neck. Have a good lunch, Jiwon. Wasn't theirs an unspoken relationship? They never made public gestures at work. The brush of his hand on the top of her head revolted her. Jiwan faked a smile and grabbed Minwan's hand, removing it. You too, Minwan. Minwan walked past their table and sat nearby. Joran looked between Minwan and Jiwan with interest. Did you make up with Mr. Park, Miss Kang? Make up, she asked. You seem distant lately. I thought you fought, did you not? You know how couples are. They fight, then make up. Minwan is great to me. Jiwan avoided Joran's eyes. It looked like it. What's the bag? What's the bag for? Was it an anniversary? This is a secret. But Jiwan lowered her voice. Joran, Hu Yian, and Suman all leaned in. He said we should go meet his mom so we can start getting ready. What? Hu Yian leapt up. So did Suman. What, Miss Kang? Jiwan knew why Suman was acting this way, but what was Hu Yian doing? Jiwan looked at the two bewildered. Why are you so surprised? Uh, uh, I mean, I just thought it's a bit early f for you to prepare for that, that thing. Hu Yian stuttered, flustered. 
Jiwan felt even more confused. Wasn't 27 an appropriate age? Nothing's official yet. I'm meeting his mother first. Then we'll take it from there. Are you really going to get married, Jiwan? Suman asked. I told you to call me Miss Kang, Jiwan murmured. And pretty much, you know how hard it is to find someone like Minwan. He's kind and has a stable job. He recently had high returns from his stocks, too. He took me to the department store as soon as he earned a profit. I'll be happy if I marry someone like him. Jiwan broke out in a cold sweat from the lies. She gulped cold water like it was a beer and resumed eating. He told me he doesn't want me to work after we get married, but I'm not going to quit my job. He wants me to work on my hobbies and rest at home, but how do I do that? Mr. Park is so good to you, Suman's eyes flashed. That's it, good. You want him, don't you? Take him and get away from me, Jiwan thought. Then Hu Yan spoke in a serious tone. So, greeting his mother? When are you thinking of going? Ooh, and that's the end of chapter 23. All right, so we're just gonna jump into chapter 24 how this marriage is viewed. We haven't decided yet. Why, Miss Yu? Hu Yian paused. Uh, none of my friends are married yet. I learned about marriage through love and war. I want to know what meeting your significant other's parents is actually like, she replied with a blinding smile, the smile of someone who didn't know what, know that reality could be more dreadful and horrific than love and war. I'll tell you when I get back. I'm also curious, Jiwan said. Miss Kang, Miss Yu, Joran said in amusement. Love and war is all rainbows and sunshine. Reality is much worse. Did you just read my mind? Jiwan's mouth dropped. It's true. You can be happy through marriage, but if I could go back to the past, I wouldn't get married, Joran said. Me either, Joran agreed, then quickly corrected herself. I mean, I think that's how I'll feel once I get married. Whether or not you marry, the regret goes both ways. Joran chuckled and resumed eating. Suman remained silent. Too many thoughts spun through her head. Joran, Minwan, marriage. Three words that should never be used together. You're my friend. I went along with everything you said. I did everything you wanted, and I always stayed by your side. I'll continue to be a good friend as long as you stop acting so arrogant and return to your place. You can't be happier than me. Suman looked up and scanned her surroundings. In the past, when she did this, Jiwan was always there, either next to Suman or alone across from her. Now, so many other people crowded around them. Joran, Hu Yian, Minwan, and what happened to their classmates from high school? No one responds to my calls. Her rice tasted as grainy as sand. Suman put down her spoon and stood. I'm not feeling well. I'm going to head up. Do you have an unset stomach? Upset stomach? Do you want some medicine? Joran asked with concern. Suman mustered and smiled and shook her head. I think I'll be fine if I rest a little. I'll get you some soda later. Suman quietly thanked her and returned to the office. Her head spun like a top. What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Her thought her whirling thoughts slowly came to a stop. Hu Yian is a contract employee. All I have to do is stop her from renewing her contract. I'll either make Juran leave or get her fired, and Minwan seems winnable. I just need to actively pursue him. Clack, clack, Suman Seal stomped in front of Juan's desk. You're okay with this, right? You have me. You've been okay until now, so you'll continue being okay. Mm -hmm. J Pharmaceutical succeeds with Third clinical test, attraction of large-scale investments progresses, hopes of commercialization. Jiwan put in an order to sell her stocks after looking at the soaring graphs. She had started with 20 million won. Now she owned 85 million won. Her heart raced like she chugged a grande, grande espresso. She understood a tiny bit why Minwan was so obsessed with stocks. The entire world looked pink. The gray ceilings of the office were sky blue. The hard cement floors looked like soft clouds. Jiwan began to hum as she walked to Jihyuk with a fresh report. I brought you the report you asked for, Mr. Yu. While Jihyuk carefully looked over the report, she couldn't stop smiling. She was already so happy with 85 million won. How happy would she feel when she hit 850 million won? Her body felt like it could float to space at the, at the thought. Miss Kang, what should I do with the money? Should I buy a house? Miss Kang, 
I'll buy a small, pretty house where, sub where a subway line 9 will be built. I'll have a long table in the living room for hosting friends, and I'll hang white curtains on the windows. As for my bed, it'll be the best mattress money can buy. Miss Kang! Um, yes, Jiwon startled back to reality from her imaginary bed. Ji Hyuk looked at her, the report in his hand. I called you three times. I'm, I'm sorry, I was thinking about something else. Her cheeks flushed. Ji Hyuk stared at Jiwon. The tiniest wrinkle appeared between his brows. Did something good happen? You seem happy. I'll pay more attention in the future, she said. He seemed to have something to say. Many things, in fact. Jiwon waited. But all he said was, I've confirmed the report. Ji Hyuk stamped the report with more force than usual and turned it over. Is he mad at me for di getting distracted for a moment? Jiwon returned to her seat. She was going to quit within a year anyway. It didn't matter if she was in her boss's good graces. Her phone buzzed. She saw a message from Suman. Should we grab some chicken tomorrow in celebration of you and Mr. Park promising to get married? On me? She took the bait fast. Jiwon smirked and sent a reply. Sounds perfect. I'll let Minwon know. In the beginning, Minwon hadn't known he'd get in such a deep relationship with a woman named Jiwon Kang either. It started out as a joke. Mm. He'd been excited at the fact that a new female employee was joining the company, but then she turned out to be an old-fashioned woman who wore thick glasses, was tall as a pole, and was stick thin. Just looking at her in a skirt was hilarious. This sucks. We get female employees once a century, and then this woman looks like a dragonfly. He sent a message to his best friend, best friend Jae Young. An amused reply came back. Try seducing her. Who knows? She might be. Gay. She might be killer. Do you think? Do you think I've lost my mind? Why would I seduce someone like that? He replied. Why? Scared you'll get turned down. You're afraid. LOL. Jae Young's text hit Min Wan's pride. Min Wan, scared of getting rejected by a woman like that? It was lunchtime. Ji Wan looked around like a country bumpkin and headed for the workplace cafeteria. Min Wan approached her. Nice to meet you. We didn't get to say hi properly, did we? Ji Wan looked at him and warily from behind her thick glasses. Ha! Huh, you're acting wary of me? Min Wan pointed at the employee card around his neck and smiled. My name's Min Wan Park, as you can see. I'm a section chief. Oh, I see. You're nervous about being new, huh? Ask me if there's anything you need. Oh, what's your number? Jiwon hesitated and typed her number into his phone. Of course, Minwon instantly pressed the phone button and checked that Jiwon's phone rang. Thank you. Have a good lunch. Jiwon nodded and walked away. Minwon sent a victorious message to Jaeyong. I got her number. She gave it to me right away. Afraid? Me? LOL. Of course she gave you her number. You're in the same office, office, idiot. Seduce her for real. If you do, I'll buy you hard liquor. Minwon smirked. No backing out. I'll kill you if you get me the cheap stuff and call it hard liquor. Do I look like you? <gasps> <laughs> I mean, he is a little scammer. It was a dumb bet of pride they sometimes made with their friends. Minwon snorted. From then on, he began to message Jiwon. Good morning. Did you sleep well? I heard it's raining today, so make sure to bring an umbrella. On busy mornings, he sent a nice hello. Did you arrive home safely? I bet you're tired. You should wash up and get some rest. Sweet dreams. In evening, he went out drinking and sent sweet greetings. But something was strange. No matter how many messages he sent, he never got a reply. Not even once. Jaeyoung teased him relentlessly. Minwon's pride smarted. He started to feel determined. He'd never imagined he would have such a hard time charming a girl, especially a country bumpkin he never would have taken a second look at otherwise. Then came the perfect opportunity. During a welcome dinner after the busy season ended, Minwon sat next to Jiwon. He resorted to his favorite line at the times like this, women are surprisingly weak over kindness. Just drink half and put the glass in front of me, Mr. whispered Minwon as he pushed a few side dishes in front of her. He covertly drank her drinks for her. He was annoyed at having the drink for a country bumpkin at a company dinner, but his pride came first. He couldn't lose his, this bet to Jaeyoung. Fortunately, Jiwon seemed like a weak drinker. He spotted a red face. He spotted a red face through her loose hair when she lowered her head. Are you drunk? 
he muttered amid the ruckus. Jiwan shook her head. I'm fine. Thank you for taking care of me. Why is she putting up a wall again? Annoyance reared in his chest. Minwan downed a glass of soju and forced a smile. If you're really thankful, do something for me. Go ahead. Can you please reply to my text? Just a simple yes is fine. Jiwan gave the smallest of some nods. The next morning, Minwan sent a message to Jiwan like always. Did you sleep well? It looked like you drank a lot yesterday. Are you feeling okay? Ugh, my stomach hurts so much, damn it. Minwan cursed. He turned on the TV and put the ramen ramyeon pot on the stove. Just as he was about to put the first chopstick of well-cooked noodles into his mouth, his phone buzzed. Yes. Was she joking? She really sent nothing but a simple yes. Do you, did you relieve your hangover yet, he typed? No. He felt even more determined than when she'd given him no response at all. Minwan put down his chopsticks and pressed the call button. After a few rings, Jiwan answered the phone. Hello? Today's Saturday, he said. Do you have any plans? No, I'm just staying in. He didn't think she'd have plans. Minwan stood and poured his uneaten ramen into the sink. You haven't had anything, right? I'll head right over there. Let's go eat hangover soup. Where do you live? What? You're coming right now? She sounded startled. Just toss anything on and come out. I threw away my ramen to eat with you, so you have to take responsibility. Jiwan tentatively told him she was near Konkuk University. Oh, okay, Konkuk University. I'll call you when I'm nearby. Fuck, what am I doing? I'm even buying her hangover soup? Minwan ended the call and took a quick shower. Now that I know where she lives, it's game over. Thinking of Jayon's grin, grim face as he paid for the hard liquor made him smirk. Jiwan looked even more like a country bumpkin in her weekend clothes than she did at work. She was unsociable and glared at her bowl the entire time they ate. Just like that, they started dating. He's intended to end it quickly after drinking some hard liquor and raising his nose at Jayong. He was going to break things off with Jiwan, saying they weren't right for each other. However, after going out with her for one month, then two months, he changed his mind. Jiwan was too nice, foolishly nice, even. She made a perfect shield from his badgering mom, who kept pushing him to get married, and all his relatives who nagged him to get a girlfriend. On top of that, Jiwan was dim-witted and clueless. All he had to do was send the occasional, I'm home, I love you message, that was it. Getting married to her isn't a bad idea. She was nice, dumb, and frugal. Moreover, she was an employee at a large company. She was good at work, so she got promoted quickly. The idea of getting married to Jiwan rather than someone who was smart and high maintenance grew more and more enticing. But then Jiwan changed. Minwan sensed she was avoiding him. She didn't answer his calls or reply to his texts. He even went to her apartment and waited for hours. Her style changed too. She took off those damned glasses and wore her long wavy hair down. In her new office clothes, Jiwan became the very definition of Minwan's ideal type. But they slowly drifted apart. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't reach her. He felt like he was going mad from anxiety. He tried to think about the change positively, but Ji Hyuk kept eyeing her. Usually Ji Won only hung out with him with himself or Suman. Now she was going to reunions and meeting other friends. He had even heard rumors that she met a man near their office building for coffee. Does this make any sense? Do you know how good I was to her? Minwon grumbled as he sank his drink. Jayong bent over laughing. You're done for. I knew this would happen when you kept dating her after I bought you the hard liquor. Stop laughing and help me think of a solution. Fuck, I put in all that work for nothing, he groaned. Why do you need a solution? Just get married. Minwan's ears perked up. Married? Yeah, you fool. You said you had intentions of marrying her. You said she's nice, frugal, and doesn't have any parents. Now she gets pretty too? There are tons of guys who will try to snatch her up, even if it's not that department head of yours. Are you seriously going to lose her after doing all that work? Why didn't I think of that sooner? Minwan slapped his knees. He could have got he. What could other guys do if he he and Jiwan were already married? 
The weekend's coming soon. Feed her some steak and mention your first home together. If she doesn't seem opposed to the idea, then she has intentions of marrying you too. Jaehyung is actually being helpful for once in his life. What kind of face would Ji Hyuk make when he attended their wedding? The thought alone pleased Min Wan. And that's the end of chapter 24. Hmm. Such a jerk. Can't stand Min Wan. <sighs> Now, and they give his more they gave his friend more at the beginning of their relationship and you see there's more now too but it's getting good and um ooh, it's getting to the good parts but thank you so much see ya in chapter 24 <laughs> why 25 Hey, it's AMC Me, and I'm back with chapter 25 of the web novel, Marry My Husband, Jiwon, Joran, and Jiwon's Project. Here's your half-spicy, half-plain chicken with radishes on the side. A server placed a freshly fried, golden-colored chicken on the table, along with three pints of beer overflowing with white foam. Thanks, Suman, Jiwon said. Thank you, Miss Jung, Min Wan added, putting a chicken leg, chicken leg on Suman's plate. Thank you, Mr. Park. Suman beamed when Min Wan put the chicken leg on her plate, but her smile faltered when Min Wan carefully removed the other chicken leg and placed it on Ji Wan's plate. She caught her frown. However, she smoothed it. If you give one to Ji Wan and one to me, what are you going to eat? Suman, Suman tore off a portion of her chicken leg and held it out to Min Wan. Here. We can order another one if that's not enough. Minwan hesitated. Oh, thank you, but... Minwan doesn't eat chicken legs, Jiwon said after swallowing. He doesn't like fried foods. He always removes the fried layer from his chicken breast before eating them. You remembered. I'm so touched. Revoltingly, Minwan truly seemed touched. Jiwon regretted speaking. It had popped into her mind because she hadn't been able to eat her favorite chicken for all 10 years they were married. I see. <laughs> the corner of Suman's mouth dropped. Still, Suman bought it for us, Minwan. Just try this one, Suman said. Er, Still, Suman bought this for us, Minwan. Just try this one, Jiwan said. Okay, then. Minwan opened his mouth. Suman fed him the chicken. Jiwan was shocked. Was this really the guy who turned over a table shouting when she brought home chicken? He claimed she did it on purpose, knowing he hated it. Mr. Park, you seem to like it. Suman widened her eyes and grinned. Minwan swallowed and drank a few gulps of his beer. I tried it because Jiwan told me to. It's a bit greasy, but not that bad. Oh my gosh, you're so romantic, Mr. Park, Suman exclaimed. Is eating chicken romantic? Jiwon ate some radish to ease the dryness in her mouth. Looks like Jiwon's going to have you wrapped around her little finger when you get married. You should try enjoying things while you still can, since you're still a bachelor, Suman went on. Jiwon remembered how much Min Wan despised family men, or anyone for that matter, who was wrapped around someone's little finger. But surprisingly, Min Wan smiled. I'd be honored if Jiwon had me around her little finger. My mom always said men should always listen to women. Your mom says a woman's voice should never be loud enough to hear outside the door. She says women are the earth and men are the heavens. Ugh. Ugh. Sorry, that's me interjecting. It's still uncomfortable, though. I believe women should sometimes turn a blind eye and let their man be free, Suman said. Really? Women usually don't think that, Minwan responded. I don't think that other women think... I don't think... Mm. I don't know what other women think, but you know how men have their caves. They say men need their own time and space, even if they're not leaving the house. Apparently men will be more attract attentive to their families if they recharge in their cave first. Minwan nodded. You're right. My married friends don't do don't have that. You understand men well. Jiwan sipped her beer and wondered what bullshit they were talking about. Didn't all humans require personal space? Why should only men get man caves? 
did men have to crawl into an actual cave and lose an arm and a leg to the barren side just to realize they should have gone home instead? <laughs> you just have to understand each other. My future husband also has to understand my hobbies, Suman said. What are your hobbies? Cooking. I also like decorating the house. My ideal type is someone who will eat the delicious food I prepare in the house I decorate. Right now, Jiwon's doing that for me, though. Suman grinned. It was true that Suman liked cooking. The problem was she never picked up after herself. Jiwon recalled how much she'd spent hours cleaning the wreckage Suman left behind any time she came over to cook. They'll get along well. It would be amusing to see who regretted it more after they married. Suman's cooking is really good, Minwan. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it, Jiwon sighed. You know, I can only cook ramyun. Minwan stroked Jiwon's hair. You don't have to cook. I'll buy you anything you want to eat. <laughs> I'm not falling for it, you punk. Jiwon just smiled and stood. I'm going to the bathroom. Oh, real quick. Okay, bye. Suman waved to Jiwon and lifted her beer again. Let's drink, but what should we do since there's nothing for you to eat? It's okay. I eat chicken breasts. It's not like I can't eat at all. Suman and Minwan lightly clinked their pints. Suman licked a droplet that landed on the back of her hand. Ew. That's where they got that from. I said we should eat chicken. And Jiwon said she'd bring you along. I thought you'd like chicken. Jiwon's a bit indifferent. Well, that's part of her charm, he chuckled. Suman didn't join in. That's why I'm worried. She should take care of you after you get married, but she has definitely, but she has difficulty even taking care of herself. Okay. I don't expect anything. I just want to find a place to hold our wedding. Minwan sounded genuine. It was strange. Minwan's emotions towards Jiwan up until now had seemed like the furthest thing from love. Then, Mr. Park, Suman leaned forward. Minwan. Suman leaned towards Minwan and crinkled her eyes. Can I tell. Can I call you Opa? When we're not at work? You're becoming my best friend's husband. Mr. Park seems so detached. A sweet scent entered Minwan's nose. Suman's flushed red cheeks were adorable. She was cute. Sure, it feels like I have a sister in law now. Okay, Opa. We'll get along well. Suman held out her hand. Minwan shook it. It's such a relief that someone like you is marrying my Jiwon. You know, don't worry about Jiwon's mom. Oh, I heard she's been absent since Jiwon was young. Suman sighed and shook her head. <sighs> That's why so many men wouldn't even consider marrying Jiwon. You know how they say daughters take after their moms. Some men were afraid Jiwon would have an affair and run away with another man. Hmm. An affair with another man? Minwan put down his beer in surprise. All Jiwan had told him was that her mom did um about her mom was that she didn't remember her well because she left when Jiwan was young. So you're saying Jiwan's mother had an affair? Huh? You didn't know? Jiwan's sorry, Suman's eyes widened. I'm sorry, I thought Jiwan told you. Sorry, Opa. Please don't tell Jiwan, okay? Suman rubbed her hands together, pleading. Minwan didn't know what to think. It would have been better if Jiwan's mother had passed away. Running away to have an affair was different. If his parents found out, they would tell him to break up with her at once. They'd never approve of the marriage. Finally, he exhaled. I understand. I don't care about that. So don't worry, Miss Jong. But part of him remained uneasy. Mm, of course. What are you guys talking about? Jiwan reappeared and sat. Minwan touched the back of her hand, still moist from washing. We were talking about how pretty you are. A liar. Jiwan smiled as she said it, though, um, while she said it, though, which really did strike him as pretty. It doesn't matter. I'll keep her under my thumb, Minwan decided. Wow. Under your thumb? Okay. All right, buddy. We'll see about that. Employees surrounded the table in the large meeting room. Everyone looked anxious at the sudden meeting Ji Hyuk had called. Is everyone here? Ji Hyuk arrived last and scanned the room. I'm sorry for calling you all here last minute. I know you must be busy, but the results of the general meeting just came out. 
Ji Hyuk's gaze moved past Ji Won and stopped on Chu Ran, who sat next to her. Miss Yang's proposal has been chosen as our new product. Woohoo! The increase in tension in the room instantly turned to cheers. In the middle of the cheering employees, Jong Uk's mouth dropped open and then shut tightly. She screwed me over with that proposal, then used it as her own opportunity. I told her to write it, and I approved it. I should have turned it down again, even if the higher-ups got on my case about it. What an ungrateful wrench. Wench. Not wrench. <laughs> Jong Uk grumbled in his head. He misremembered everything, telling himself he'd chosen Joran the right to proposal out of goodwill. Pfft, sure, guy. M my proposal? Joran stand up, bewildered. Congratulations. Good work, Miss Yang. Please step this way. Ji Hook held out a hand to Joran, who walked forward. Someone whistled as they shook hands. Ji Wan couldn't contain her happiness. She clapped hard. That's enough with the congratulations now. Ji Hook raised his hand, and the commotion settled. This project is going to be a collaboration between the development division and our marketing division. Miss Yang will be the project team leader. Please create a team of five members and submit a team ro uh, team rooster roster. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> The product will be released for the summer season, so the team members will have to work overtime. I'll be leaving for a long business trip soon, so things will get even busier. If the overtime detested, if the overtime detesting Ji Hyuk actually admitted, they'd need to work overtime. This project must be difficult and important. Of course, high risk meant high rewards, but only if they succeeded. Everyone grinned, thinking of bonus vacation days, but Joran's expression darkened. Who will take care of Yonji? What about the housework? It'll be expensive to hire a sitter. My credit card's already close to the limit. It'll be hard to get by after making the apartment loan payments. She couldn't expect any help from Jaehyun. Her in-laws couldn't take care of Yonji either because of their spinal, pop, uh, spinal problems. The only people she could ask for help were her own parents, but she would rather die than let her parents find out how she lived. I'll leave it in your hands, Miss Yang. I know you must be busy with the performance assessments, but good luck. Even Ji Hyuk's encouragement felt uncomfortable. If I wasn't married, I would have eaten and slept at work to pull off this project perfectly. The pointless thought spun in her head. Miss Yang, Ji Wan lightly tapped her shoulder as she trudged out of the meeting room. Why don't we take five minutes for, refre for refreshments while we're up? Sure. She needed a cup of cold coffee. Joran sat in the break room and downed half her coffee as soon as Jiwon gave it to her. Whew, that feels good. Joran put her cup down with a smile. Jiwon lowered her voice. Today's a good day. Why don't you look, why do you look so grim? If this project's successful, you'll get a bonus and a promotion if, is guaranteed if your performance assessment results come out well. The thing is, Joran hesitated, She'd never told anyone at work about the situation with her daughter and husband. From her experience, working at companies when married women spoke up about these issues, they were advised to resign. Although the official reason given was always lack of ability or carelessness, she was lucky her desk hadn't been cleared out when she returned from maternity leave. Was the question too personal? Jiwon asked, sensing Jiwon's, sensing Juran's tentativeness. You don't have to tell me, but if there's anything I can help you with, let me know. We're family. We should help each other. The words almost moved Joran to tears. She drank more of her coffee and spoke with difficulty. Well, you know, this project is a bit involved. Yes, Jiwon tilted her head. I, I have problems at home. I don't have anywhere to leave my kid. And I'm already late all the time because of that. I have to sprint home at six o'clock on the dot to take care of her. On top of that, I don't know what to do about the housework. My husband won't touch it. Oh. Jiwon thought about when she went back to work after getting married. The house was always scattered with Minwon's clothes, dirty socks, empty bags of chips, and ramen pots. Their home was always filthy, like the interior of his car, and it always fell to Jiwon to clean up. Can't your in-laws or parents help? My in-laws have back problems, and my parents... Joran sighed again. <sighs> They'll think I'm doing well. They think I'm doing well. I don't want to destroy the illusion. 
I get what you mean, Jiwon understood. Joran's situation... Jiwon understood Joran's situation painfully well. She nodded. Still, I'm sure your parents want to do anything they can to for you. Are you going to give up this project? You know you'll be promoted afterwards. You won't have to suffer under Mr. Kim anymore once you're the same rank as him. It was tempting. Joran swallowed and looked at Jiwon strangely. She felt like things would be all right somehow. Miss Yang, please include me in the project. I'll sleep and eat at work for an entire week if I have to, Jiwon said. Really, Miss Kang? Juran was touched. She had just been wondering who to add to the team. Of course, and there's something I want to ask. What is it? If it's within my ability, I'll make it happen. It's difficult, but... Miss Yang, Jiwan wrapped her hands around Juran's, who in turn cradled her cup. Please add Miss Jong as one of the team members. <gasps> oh, shoot. Ah! And that's the end of chapter 25. Oh my gosh. Gosh. 